got a quorum, so we go ahead and open the meeting. The meeting is now open. Uh, Joe, you want to welcome uh, the guest? You, uh... Um, sure. Tara is an applicant, okay. and she's here um, as that tonight for the small business position. Laura was appointed by Laura Sandifer was appointed by uh, Greg Comer to fill yeah. the agriculture position. Um, do, David, we vote, do we vote on that? That's yeah. I'm just welcoming them. I guess, oh, I'm I'm I was kidding. I was I'm very funny. I was kidding. 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 I was just taking a jam. I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. David Johnson uh, will be representing the chamber and has been appointed by the chamber. And uh, Andy is going to be filling, hopefully, the finance position. Who would you say was small business? Tara. She's an applied for, for yeah, she's right. she's applied for small business position. She's applied for yes. small business. Yes. I don't know if that fits small business up to the board to discuss that. What's that does not fit? An attorney uh, representing small business. I do a hell of a lot more than just an attorney. What? I said I'm a hell of a lot more than just an attorney. Well. Okay. So um I had requested from Seth um, a template for our agenda. This is not exactly like it because, well, because I couldn't make it work. <laughs> and whenever I say that, I mean like literally I couldn't make the template work. So I just kind of fit it into what we already had. But uh, I noticed that their mission statement was always on the agenda. That's probably a good idea. A lot of people here may have forgotten what the mission statement even is or you may not have ever known we have some new faces here so i did include that and left that in here and the mission statement is on your second page if you would like to review that i didn't put the bylaws in here this time only because well something happened with our drive and i could not locate them so i have to wait for christina she was out today and she's going to have to uh, rearrange the drive again it was deleted off of one computer and it got all discombobulated because of that. So we have files everywhere. So we'll clean that up. I um, have a bunch of copies. I don't know what I went through. I brought my board book and for some reason I have like a bazillion copies. Of okay. Lots, if anyone would like them. So for the, for the ones that are on the approval list today, we will um, send you copies of the bylaws via email. Um, but for everybody else, if you want a copy, already got it on email or you can ask me for it again um, so the new board positions uh, or the new applicants I should say we already went over but uh, Laura was the first one to be appointed and that was by Greg Comer so I guess we just need to uh, make a motion on that I make a motion to accept Laura Sanford seconded by CC any discussion all those in favor? Laura? As the A? <coughs> say aye. Aye. Opposed? Same side. Pass. Motion passed. I'm sorry, I'm talking to the recording over and over again, Christina. Do you uh, want us to speak loud and give our name when we say the motion so that you'll have it under the Yes, please. And we may need to vote out loud too. Yeah. Um, okay, Andy Miller is the. Uh, applicant for our financial position he's he happens to be the sba rep for this area which would be fantastic for us and just uh that's just a bonus he's already a loan officer president of bank i think it's kind of a speaks for itself so anybody wants to make a motion on that i'll make that motion okay. Yep, second. Mike Rogers seconded. Who made the motion? I did, Bob. Bob Lilly made the motion. <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, uh, same sign. Passes. Okay, and then Tara Ward applied for this small business position. You have these applications. Uh, Tara has a degree in economics. She's an attorney. She completed the IEBC basic economic development course last year. 
She sits on the Hartford City Economic Development Council and is a small business owner in the community, including Maine and Local, which is uh, a new tenant at the hub. Anybody wants to make a motion on that? I'll make that motion. Bob made the motion. I'll second. Seconded by Sam. All in favor? Any discussion? There you go. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Motion passed. I'm not trying to echo y'all. I'm yelling at this recording. And then David Johnson, I'm sorry, David, I didn't have you listed on here because I didn't know that you were going to be here. But David, I did know that you were uh, appointed by the chamber, correct? So if you want to tell them a little bit about yourself. I'm a co-owner of Southern Auto Sales here in Hartford. Uh, I have a degree, a degree from Kentucky Wesleyan College in Sociology and Human Resources Administration. I've been in the car business since 1998. Been co-owner since 19, since 2007. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion on that? I see C. C. Robinson motion. Second. Second by Scott Lewis. <laughs> discussion. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. David is uh, voted in. Welcome. Motion well, carries. Welcome all. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to all. So, okay. So, all you guys are voting members now. We'll move on with the meeting. Kenny, the next item is for you. Resigning member discussion. Okay. The last time we met, uh, we drew the plan up for the original members to leave by the end of March, if it took that long. Had two members per quarter. Two members left by July the 1st. Three members left by three resignations. In my opinion, and you can discuss it, we have one more needs to join those three by the end of September to make four by that quarter. That would leave two more by December. I don't think there's any more than that probably because some of these original members are now in the protected position of being elected. So it doesn't leave Many original members that are not in the elected positions. In fact, I think CC and David, myself, are the only three uh, original members that are not elected or appointed or something. Yeah, so that will leave us three original members on the board for now, until or unless and until you know the election changes next time that comes around. But that Scott, Sam. Wasn't there one more? Oh, yes, Paul. Paul and uh, Seth. Paul but Seth is not an the, original member. So. It's up to the members. Uh, the mayors decide Paul. Yeah. If they ever made, uh, they decide. Well, it's the same with Sam. It's up Sam, to Sam, same way. Remind or, me, Sam, when that is. What's that? When is it? When do the magistrates potentially change? Uh, two years. You served for two years. No, we served for four, but we're on our second year. Yeah, no, I'm saying the four OC, does the judge, how does that work? Does the judge appoint the, the fiscal yeah. board of yeah. Well, David Pick has uh, agreed to resign with David taking his place. Effective at the end of September. There he is. Sorry. <laughs> I just said that you had agreed to, uh, or I said you would resign by the end of September. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 So I think what you need here is 
you guys need to decide does it need to be just one that goes by the end of September if you do then you need to change your motion from the last time to one person leaving this quarter and however many next quarter or whatever you guys decide to do that's what I said we can discuss it Well, being a new member, I think that only one should leave if that's possible and, you know, stretch it out a little bit so everything doesn't convert to new right away. Well, it's possible to go with three left in July mm -hmm. rather than Three already two. left, that'd be four gone. And it's up to the board what they decide, what we decide, and what goes on. But in my recollection, it was that two would leave every quarter, period. And we also talked about others resigning and had talked about that being on top of our two that leaves every quarter. Uh, that's not how I remember that. Uh, that's how I remember it. Uh, so, and I, you know, I don't care. I ain't gonna get no pissing contest with nobody. But, you know, it's, we're right. We either have to do what we said we was gonna do or change what we said. What did we say was going to happen? Two would leave every quarter. Well, what if you have three one quarter? Do you count that one in the next quarter? Or? No. Two leave every quarter. You don't think so. I don't think so. Of course. I mean, I, that's what I said. It's up to the board, Kenny. I ain't uh, arguing with you. Uh, it's. Us original people will be off of here soon enough, so give us a little time. Who do we say could resign? David, Fig. But she did. But she did. He's the fourth one then? It would be the fourth one since we started this. Which would be four of us on uh, this quarter. So who does that leave left? Who's left? Hmm? Who's, who's who's the left? original that are left? The original are left. You and CC. Me and CC. David. David Pig. Well, David's resigned. Yeah, he's resigned. That's why this David we just appointed you. Yeah. Yeah. David with David. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, I'll get these. I think just added him. Was that four? Remind me what you requested out of our chair. Like, that what you wanted to see. What's that? Hey, you're. At the last meeting, when we made you vice chair, you had um, expressed. You didn't want to take chair until you had a chance to fully acclimate to your role. Correct. So with David Fig leaving, that is four for the second quarter, correct? The way I said it is, three and one is four, four. two and two is four. So that means that two would go off in December. And mm -hmm. that would be everyone? And that'll be it. Um, I was reappointed for some of your information. I hadn't looked it up in January 2015 from fiscal court to at large. So my term actually would be up in January. Anyway, to it. So that would just leave season. Six year term altogether. So what <laughs> Whatever this is, choosing of the board, I have the our Hawk County Hospital um, administration and board has chosen who will come on. She has some hesitancy because she has um, been apprised of what can be a conflicted board situation. Well, and I assured her that before I left the board, we would be in a peaceful, harmonious situation for her to come on. She's going to be a great addition for you. She's our CFO. She has strong. Um, strong financial skills, strong community ties, but I mean, she's, I talked to her today. I guess that would be my first question, and, and I've, I've worked with Shelly several times, but I think she'd be a great addition. Um, 100%. I mean, if you're talking about just the two of you leaving, my, my first question would be, I don't know that the time is so much issue if you've got somebody to replace that's yeah, qualified. She, I think obviously. that she would prefer a little more time, mm -hmm. but it is, um, that was our natural next step. And I, I just have to say, as the employee here, I have 
I, I wish that if any if anyone was going to talk to you about a board position, please don't talk to them about all of the negative. I know there's been negative, but it's not all negative. There are we do some good things, and I think this board, even with the personalities, there's a lot of good that can be done. I don't want to scare people off from serving on this board because of people's personalities conflicting. I hope that she doesn't feel like that coming in and she can kind of take a step back from that and, and separate whatever negativity has been. I don't think it is an individual person. I think it's an organization as a whole that, I mean, we're a small community, so when we have a, a, a board in conflict, like a board's been in conflict, it, it, it impacts perceptions. It does. So January morning, the, the, uh, essentially everyone would be off on January morning and it would be a fresh start for the new year going forward. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. So uh, to me, it looks like to me that the, the, the new people should start January morning and get two going off in December. And, uh, I just out of curiosity, I mean, given that in my experience on any board I've said uh, November and December tend to be defunct anyway because of the holidays. So is there anything crazy y'all are looking to accomplish before January 1? I hope we make some type of Well, I hope you do too, but I'm just saying that everybody's got a list of priorities sometimes. Mine's to be able to budget out Christmas at this point. <laughs> well, we might take a long... I think the priority for us really in this whole thing is just to get the board flowing together. Really, that's it. I mean, if we can do that before... And those, those are the, the only year. two that you have... I mean, it's not like you're having to stage this out over a whole year or anything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know that it really matters at that point. Okay. Yes, I serve with the pleasure of the board. Huh? I said I'll serve with the pleasure yeah, of the Yeah, I mean, so... If you, stay, if, you, if you leave now or you stay till January, either way, I don't think it is. So. I will say that our original board of 11, nine of, uh, eight of those served up to the term limits and one other one would have, but he passed away, Pearl Lawrence. And one moved, uh, Purdue, the Purdue boss, uh, left. The only one one member that we had to actually leave and, uh, was our tourism, Debbie Bayman. Got too many things in there. Far and didn't have time, but we had a great uh, group of people for all those years that uh, worked hard. Well, for those of you that don't know me too well, you've already voted me on, so you can't vote me off just yet. I'm not, I don't sit around, so I'm going to ask a straight question. Would you like to stay, or do you want to go ahead and resign? I'm glad to stay. Okay. I'm Kenny? I'm glad to stay. I'm going to stay. Then, if you the only two left, I don't see why you can't stay until the end of December. Let's right. stay beating around the bush. That's, That's a form of a motion, right. yes. So, the motion <laughs> floor. The motion was yes. that we accept One Mr. King's up. resignation yes. tonight, and the other two remaining members would be on through December 31st. Motion made by Tara. Who seconded? Mr. Lewis. Scott. I will say that my term runs out sometime in January when my appointment was, but I'm not hopefully going to be fussed about a few days in January. You can handle it. I'll be ready. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Okay. Get into approving the minutes. Those are long ones. Sorry. Take down and look them over. You guys did receive these via email yes. as well. I make a motion to accept the amendment. I'll second. Just a moment. There was, I, I did note in there in discussion, Tara's name was so long, so and she's a brand new board member. Okay. <clears throat> It's probably pronounced that way in many occasions. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. I think that it like two T's. Okay. 
I'll have her fix it. We can accept it with that. Though. Hard hard. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Tara. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Before we vote, uh, we make it clear that the motion that we passed last time where we made the term limits permanent is a change in bylaws and uh, whatever. And this will have to be approved by fiscal court before that is final. So hopefully we can get the bylaws, get with Justin and get those bylaws change, they didn't want to change the Gibson court at one time. But until then, actually, that is not official. Well, you got the, the discussion in the last one, and it was a long discussion, so we had to listen to it and go back to several parts of those minutes to add stuff to it. But the discussion you guys had was you wanted all the bylaw changes to happen at once. So the votes are to say, yes, we want this as a bylaw change and yes we want to do it this way until then but it will have to be a bylaw change and there's going to be several of those because you guys are going to be approving all of those bylaw well, we can changes. get by with that till the court approves but they'll be the final say on any yeah. bylaw changes okay uh i still got the same motion yeah first second. i made a motion to accept the minutes Second. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Minutes passed. For the financial report, some of you may have noticed that the dates were wrong on the one that you got via email. That was just a clerical error. I mean, not changing the dates. They have been corrected. This is July, and the reason it's July is because we didn't have the uh, financials for August yet whenever we did this. So um, it is, you know, a month behind, but this is where we were. It's not far off from where we are currently. And you can see both the IDA and OCDA on there. Most of it's payroll. Does any of the hub rent go into OCDA budget or do they go straight to county? It does go into the OCDA budget, yes. And they actually break it out into a spreadsheet and show us what the monthly income was for that. We get, it's all broken down in different spreadsheets, which is why we do this to give you guys a simplified version of it. But yeah, we have, and we'll get to that. I'll tell you guys about the tenants at the hub, but yeah, we can see what the income is versus what we're We have spending. to have a budget for the IDA money. Sometimes we're still, right? No. That's already done. Budget? Yeah, it's done. It has to be passed by the fiscal court. The resolution has to be signed well, by. I saw the, the resolution and uh, the asked me when we we're going to do our, get our budget. No, the, the, only thing that's, the only thing that's due for the IBA is our completion year completion report, which is what we say we spent money on last year. So the, and that budget was already done. We just have to say, yes, we spent this much money in this category, and yes, we spent this much money in this one. And this is how much money we have left over. And again, the fiscal court has to sign that, and then we return it to the LG. Did we? I make a motion to approve the financial report as presented. I second that. All those in favor say aye. Okay. Opposed, same sign. So that was seconded by Laura. Motion made by Seth. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. Did we take a vote on that? Yes, motion passed. Motion passed. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, so for my update for you all, I did send you all a, a quick update. I think it was quick anyways. I tried my best to shorten it. I know y'all hate it when I write paragraphs, but it's hard to update you without it. So anyways, I did send you an update, but since then, um, 
We've continued with the uh, expansion of WPT. That's an ongoing project. I'll be talking to you all about that in closed session in just a little bit. Um, the sale of one of the local manufacturers, which I've been talking to you all about, uh, it's still in progress but on hold because of pending financial information from them. Dice sale downsizing, uh, I've heard, is going to get more critical in the short term, so there's going to be some more jobs that are not going to come back there. So that's just something to think about in the in the long term as we uh, try to create more industrial jobs. Our coal mine we know is gone. Dicell being one of our larger manufacturing employers um, just kind of is trickling away. So it's just, uh, just something to kind of like fire under our butts, I guess. Um, I am working with one of our, our leads that we got um, for a piece of private property here in the county. They are not looking uh, within our industrial park, but um, we have been in slow negotiations with them. Don't know where that stands, but it is a German company, just so you all are aware. Um, we'll see how that goes. That's really all I can say about that right now, but that's where we are. The PBI grant, we did identify five properties for that um, and went through the grant application process for those five properties here in the county. The reason why we, we submitted so many was because it was free this year. Last year it was a $500 application fee. So, you know, we submitted for Bluegrass Crossings alone last year because we had to pay for it. Uh, this year, anyone who had property that they wanted to develop that we knew about, that we could get the utility information on that was, uh, you know, reasonable to develop, develop industrially, we, we tried to gather as much information as we could to submit those. We did get to a point where it narrowed down to one um, for actual submission, but we do have a whole lot of information now about those properties and that gets us a whole lot closer to um, development on them for the future. So um, the cities, I sent it to the magistrates. I'm not sure if you guys sent it out to the cities or not, but I didn't get any responses from any of the mayors. That grant is a product development initiative. It's a $6 million uh, pot of money that we get every year. I say we get, we have uh, that pot to write grants for every year. Um, and it should get bigger. It is to develop industrial sites. That's what it's for. Um, anybody can apply for it. Um, it. You can write it for privately owned property, which you could not last year, or at least it was a whole lot more restricted last year. This year you could. So um, in the process, we gathered a whole lot of information that will help us hopefully develop those properties um, further, and especially for next year. We were missing some critical components of those grants, one of them being wastewater. So we're going to be getting with all of those utility partners um, in the next month or so, and we're going to go ahead and gather all that information before next year's PDI grant is rolled around. But um, just something to think about for next year. This will come around again next year. If you know of any properties that look like they are, they don't flood, they might be developable, you know someone wants to sell their property for something like that, just let us know, we'll check it out. I mean, uh, but it is a very extensive grant process, so the longer we have to think about it, to gather information, the better off we are. Because we're talking about environmental studies and soil studies and, you know, flood zone maps and crazy the amount of stuff they ask for on that. So. so just something to think about. That's what we've been doing for about the past two and a half or three weeks was writing those grants. Um, the next item is new business and the first thing under that is hub tenants. We do have uh, three new tenants at the hub um, and, and Chase did move out. So I think with four of us um, maybe there's five. There's actually five. I think with five of us, that's the most tenants we've ever had at the hub so far, so that's good. Um, we had the new remote workers training 
which we graduated seven recently from that program, and all of the ones who um, actually applied for positions as remote workers did gain employment. Um, one of them has already been promoted, and they're supposed to be doing a story about her to help uh, us push for our next cohort. We do still have 24,000 or something like that in that account. Um, for our, that was a grant that we were provided for training and um, for some other things. But anyways, so we're going to do another round of that before that grant reporting period is up. It's a four-week training program. One obstacle we ran into was broadband access. Some of these graduates that just uh, went through it could not meet the speed tests for the employers. Otherwise, they would have been hired much quicker. We had to really uh, send them on a, on a quest in order to find a place where they could go um, to, to meet those speed tests. And whenever I say that, I mean they came to the hub and did the speed test and they did not meet the standards. So then we had to start working with Spectrum to fix that problem because we were supposed to have good enough internet to meet that standard. So anyway, so it's been a bit of a, a, a game when it comes to that sort of stuff, but I think we're ready for another seven, and I think if these seven want to uh, be employed as remote workers, we have the speeds that will support that without a problem now, and uh, we can get them through within four weeks. So we've got a meeting tomorrow with the uh, Connected Nation team should start advertising for applicants within the next few weeks, and then we'll get another cohort of remote workers to go through the training program. So. Julie, what kind of, what type of job will they get hired uh, There is customer service, um, you know, tech support, those type of jobs. And I did have a list of who was working where, but um, I don't, that's been a, a while ago since I had her send me that, so I, don't, I didn't bring it with me. but. Um, I didn't recognize the employer's names, but they are all uh, employers that employ either all or mostly remote workers. They do hire for places like AT&T, IBM, you know, things that you would recognize. But most of our uh, students that are employed right now, places I hadn't heard of, but they seem happy and they've gotten promoted and they're making decent money, $14, $15 an hour, you know. So that's pretty good for sitting at home if you weren't employed before, you know, or if you were underemployed, it's, it's not a bad start. So I'm curious, the, the minimum speed requirement, what is that now? What's the average speed requirement? I think it was 10 was what they were asking for. And we're not um, even getting that at the No, we, they were getting speeds like six. I mean, it was terrible. It was terrible speed test. But we were supposed to have 20 megs uh, symmetrical at the hub. Whenever we had uh, the IT folks and, and Spectrum to review that, we did meet the speed test. But during that COVID time in March, whenever they were all graduating um, and going to the hub to try to do those speed tests, they were none of them were meeting those speed tests. So we don't know what happened there. But it seems to be good now. We, and we also are up on our contract for Spectrum, so we're in negotiations to renew that contract. And we have, you know, some things to talk to them about with Connected Nation to make sure that everything goes the way we need it to go so that we have people who are employed and not having to worry about whether or not that is, I mean, we pay a lot of money for that internet access. It needs to meet those speeds. I was getting better speeds off my data on my phone at home out on Prentice Road, for those of you who know where that is, um, then we were getting at the hub at that time, so it was bad. I don't know why. Fixed, though. Okay, old business. Uh, we have the quote for the chamber. I'm going to pass this around and let you guys look at those um, because the child site stuff that you all were talking about, I'm not an IT person. They had to explain that to me, and basically what they're saying is that's, that is two separate sites. And I also got the quote behind it for um, just re-adding the stuff for the chamber that was already there back on the site. Basically to give you a rundown, the quote for the child site, the child site is a new site, it's not, um, it is a separate site. Basically, you can just borrow information 
from each other is what they're saying and because they only build economic development websites and they don't have some of the features that would be needed if they did it that way and have to kind of create them they're saying $25,000 it is a separate site. Twenty dollars so, for the new site? No. For the child site? Yeah. Additional? Yes. That's what we would quote the chamber that they would need? No. Yeah. That is the quote oh. for that. If they wanted to add back the stuff that we already had there, the chamber page, um, as it were, plus a few other features, it was $2,500 to $3,000. Does the chamber not have a website already? Yes. Oh, okay. So we paid pay twenty thousand dollars for our economic development site, which originally included the chamber information. Right. And that chamber information was included on the site we had for the twenty thousand. Yes. Now Gold Shovel is saying it's going to be another twenty five thousand to add that back. No. 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 Okay. Help, help me out. No. To so add that back. back. I remember if I heard you correctly, to add that back to what that paper says is twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars to add it back where it was. Okay. To build a separate child site. I believe David Moore oh, wrote that okay. up last yeah, time. Yeah. A separate child site by that document says it's twenty five thousand. Yes. Okay. And the child site is where the they would demise the child site. There's um, options no, for kids. There's no way they go at the child's age. No, and I don't think it even makes sense because what from what they're telling me, and like I said, I don't know, I don't build websites. <clears throat> it is a separate website. That's what it is. But you can just borrow each other's information. So I don't know. I, I just read what it you guys can read. Here. So where are we at with this? We're, Chamber was waiting for that quote, correct? Yes. Okay. So I have, I really have issues with our website. So um, are we at the point then where Chamber says, well, we know they're not going to save child site at that price. So if they say we can do it for the 2,500, was it, or so, 3,000? Then they either, we put their information back on with that or they, keep their own original site. Is that well, correct? Well, no, if they put that back on like it is, they keep their own site anyway. Um, it just, I mean, that, their own site is not going to cost them anything additional. Right. It's already there. Why isn't it just a link? Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. It is yeah. a link. Yeah, it is. But what, what, they, what we had on there before was also a separate side of our website, which was the chamber. And uh, if we shared a website, then... No. The other, the link, I guess, would go away, um, but... Uh, but we'd be duplicating information. We would be duplicating information, yes. I mean, if they've got a site that's functional and everything, I'm kind of with Jody, why not just do a link and let them maintain their site and they can put whatever they want on it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I think that that's what we need to do, but that's, <coughs> I, I don't care to put their information back, I mean, the, the stuff back on there, if, they, if, yeah. they, if that's what they want to do. But um, either way, unless they want to pay $25,000, it's a separate site. <laughs> David, the David, refresh my memory what the chamber's intent is. Or how so we, the goal was originally the, Davids. the Oceda chamber site was cohesive. Yes. It both operated out of the same website. Um, and it, it really it presented well for anyone coming to ohiocounty.com. Um, you know, it presented well. You could see everything in one spot. It all worked together. Um, and so that's, that was the original intent, is when we went to this, why, why couldn't we do the same? But who built who, who the first site? Chamber. No, no. Well, well, Chase, Chase built the first site. So we didn't have an actual company that, that specialized no, no, or maintained like anything. We used Drew oh. Wars. It was okay, like Squarespace. Yeah. Squarespace. Yeah. And it was, um, yeah. it was minimal. I want to say fiscal court. Didn't they have Ohio? Chamber. It was nice to have it inclusive in one spot. Didn't they have OhioCounty.com before that, the chamber? Yeah, they still do. Still yeah, they they still they still you had that before that. But you still, you still own that domain. Yeah. Right? The, the chamber. Yeah. 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 So does yeah. the chamber own that, or just, is that a personal site? The chamber owns. Well, well and yeah, Josh Coppage, um, he's the registered person. To well, have he's the, the registrar. Yes. Chamber. Yeah. 
So, I mean, okay, so but you all want to keep in your own content. Like, you don't want to have to ask permission to change it. You all want to update it as you want to, right? The chamber does? Um, we want to be able to update it. Yeah. Like, like I mean, you're going to want to programmatically do the updates? No. Fair. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> who's, doing, who's, who's doing it now? Well, I don't know what's going on now. Before, we would, they would submit a request to OC, to OC would make changes. Did y'all ever have a website before that? A long time ago, a long time ago. Casey's done the studio. You don't have another website to link. Yes. Yes. They yeah, do. they have, they still it's have. It's already linked, linked on. Yeah, it's right. already linked there. I think we should have just obviously give them that quote because that's what they're waiting for. But, um, I just don't see them saying, yeah, we're going to spend 25000 So I think we should just suggest that they keep their own OhioCounty.com and link to them. I, I agree, but here's the thing, and I just want to make sure you guys understand, even if they were to want to spend the $25,000, it's still a separate, it's still their own website. Right. So regardless, unless, I mean, we could add, it's still going to be their own website no matter what. Right. I'm going to toss out that they could probably get a, their own quote a lot cheaper and get a much yeah. better deal yeah, if they were to do it themselves. And then us link to it. And, 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 here's, yeah. and here's the, here's the thing dollars. about Golden Shovel. They only do economic development websites. They do not have a shopping feature. They don't, they'll have to create the, the form for membership and all that for it to link. So it's, they only do economic development websites. And that's why, what their argument is to why this is so much trouble for them to create you know a different type of website but to add it back on there is not that bad but it's not giving the chamber what the chamber is asking for which is they want their own ability to do everything you know their own administrative I, I think Jody's right I think you just have the chamber get their own quotes because I think they'll be much happier with that to have somebody to maintain it and then you know OCDA can link to them and they can link to OCDA and that way you everybody can get their so. own information I think that's the way to do it I've always thought that that's the way to do it so. but while we're on this subject I, we kind of talked about it earlier who makes our corrections on that website because it's well right now no one until after we deal with this and then we're we've actually got Next week, next Wednesday, we have a meeting with Golden Shovel where they're going to walk us through. I mean, they make them. They can make them as we request them, but they're going to show us how to do it ourselves, too. Okay. So we're I would like to be that. involved in that meeting because what is launched right now, there is a ton of misinformation. Okay. So let's Again, get Again, we have not gone through this website, and it, it hasn't been, there's lots of things on there we want to change. It has been launched. We are waiting for this to take place. And then we will deal with the maintenance of the website and cleaning it up and doing all the things we want to do your to do to present it. with that maintenance? Are you going to send it out to the entities represented and ask them to supply a list? Are you going to invite them to be part of the process? What entity? Well, like tourism. Uh, I don't have a tourism website. I have an economic development website. I you think have a tourism link to it. I think what, what Cece is asking is how many no, you look at it. To your website, but as far as the way tourism is represented on the site, yeah. yes, definitely. We will sit down yeah, that's and we'll go do. over what you want it to look like and we'll talk about how that affects that. We'll, we'll discuss it. We will work it out and figure out a happy way to do it where everybody is, you know, served yeah. well and it's presented well. That's the goal. Because I think, obviously, OCDA would want to mention that we have our own hospital here in our community that employs several, but mm -hmm. I sure would like the hospital to make sure that that information is correct. Yeah, before we just talk about it. I think that is the best way to, when you have that meeting, invite those entities there that are going to be represented on it. Yeah. So do we need a motion for this or anything, or what are we doing? I'm sorry. That sounded like I was being harsh, but I'm just really asking. David, did you get that information enough to take back? Uh, this is the first time I've seen it. So. I can certainly give that back to the chamber. You understand what? Yes. I don't know that we need a motion. Is there a link on our current OC yes. the website that goes to the chamber? Yes. But it sounds to me like they don't really have access to that site because Chase just did it himself, right? No, they do have access. You do have access. The newest one we have. Okay. Okay. They have access to it. I mean, you could, I, I'm assuming our current site, I have not seen it, I guess. Is it, is it launched? Is it mm -hmm. public? Yes. 
that it has links to the school system and no. Uh, yeah, it does. We looked at it last month. I don't remember. Yeah. We, I looked at it on my phone when we were meeting and pulled it up, and it had links to some various entities in the county. Yeah. There's um, anywhere where the school system would be mentioned, we would link it to your website, um, and that's that's standard. But there's a lot of link, a lot of I don't I won't say links, a lot of buttons, a lot of stuff here and there on the website. Like I said, we we want it to be flow a little bit better, to be a little bit more user friendly. Um, there's a lot of things we want to do with it. So, so am I hearing after this meeting, you're now wanting to go back to them and start doing the maintenance and, and the cleanup? Yes. So that's something we could all go to the site and make a list and email to yeah, you. That's what I was wondering. Oh no, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Listen, it is a it, it is a very extensive site. It is going to take a long time for us to go through. If y'all want to, if y'all see things you want to to do, let's let's either like come together and have a board meeting about it, and we'll walk through it, or. If you guys start sending me individual stuff, I'm, it's going to be a So mess. we should create our own punch list and come back next month. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm just thinking, like, we're about to launch our new site. So what we did is we sent it out to every department and said, review what's your area. Oh, yeah. If you want to review what's your area. Send us any input you may have. Because as webmasters, we don't know if something has changed all the time. So give us your changes. Give us your input. Yeah. And we'll accommodate it to the best of our ability. And that's fine. If y'all want to look at your area, your specific area, but please just don't start like going through the entire site. And I've, I've probably already seen most of the things you're going to tell me anyway, and it would be a, a nightmare. But if you want to look at the parts that have pertain to you and like make a list of things that you would like to see and us get together and go over, I'm more than happy with that. Please, and thank you. How do we know when to get those to you when you do honor? But there's not a deadline. It's a, I mean, yeah, when, do you when are you meeting? You just want to bring them to the next meeting? And the next meeting is just to teach me, teach us how to use the administrative oh, okay. controls of it. And so we'll we'll do that. But as and far sure as... want your board's input on like what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. But just not, not like that. She doesn't want 20 emails a day. Yeah, one person yeah. Saying, exactly. Um, oh, oh, by the way, I meant this thing here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Put a period out. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. There was that comma over there. Um, so I guess what we can do is just, if, if you guys want to look at your own individual sides of it, and of course we'll come together and we'll, we'll review the entire thing at some point, but. Um, if you want to look at your own individual representation on there, make suggestions for now, that's fine. And you can send them to me whenever. And we can talk about them if there's anything that I didn't already see or we didn't already talk about. Um, as far as tourism goes, you and I and Kenny are going to meet on that anyway. Um, the hospital, I think you're, right now, we don't even have the video in there yet. We're still waiting for that because we had to have some professional photos taken last week. So we're waiting on those before the video is launched. But the hospital is included in the video, um, and that's been a got long big time stuff coming. Mm -hmm. Y'all got some big stuff going on. Yeah, definitely, and that is mentioned mm -hmm. in there. Will Christina be able to handle a lot of this for you? She's going to handle some of it, but I mean, it's a lot. It, it's a lot, and a lot. so um, that's why I don't want it to be that way because it'll be a We'll be bombarded with just that. So we're going to have to pay fees to go and shovel to make the changes. Are no, we already you feel like that you're going to be able to handle that internally. But then no, we'll probably, a lot of it will send to them. Uh, but again, they have a, like a part of the contract that they'll make the. Is, is yeah. that the $5,000 a year? That yes. Right. Yes. But as for the content. Exactly. Okay, so right. we can make it after we get trained. We can make some changes if we want to. but. Most of the time, we're just going to be sending those on to them to do it because we're already paying them for all of that, and uh, you know they know more about websites than we do. So, uh, but there's more to it than just the changes. It's also important how things are worded because um, it helps us to be more visible if you know searchable words are included. I mean, there's just a lot of information that. I'm going to deal. They're going to build that search engine. They're going to know what to do. Back, yeah. Back sure. yeah, they're going to know what to do and how to do it, and, and we just are not experts at that. So, all right, um, lead generation. 
Um, so starting tomorrow afternoon, um, Christina and I will be um, learning with uh, FDI 365 on how uh, best to attract and um, retain new industries. So um, they are the company that sends us the leads. They do collect all the data that comes along with projects and ones that are won and ones that are lost. So they're going to help us um, with best practices on how to gain the attention of some of these companies that we really want to attract um, and help us through that process a little bit. So hopefully our lead generation will start working really well for us whenever we get a little bit more in tune with how best to approach some of these companies. We've got some really good leads. Now it's just landing a project. So it's not, it sounds like it's an overnight thing, but it's not. You know, they told me today, if you, uh, if you get a site visit or two in the first year of your lead generation, you're good, you're, you're doing good. And then, you know, it's, you know, one or two years before you can really hope to start seeing projects that are really interested in your area so so it's aggressive but um, it's not un unheard of to get a project within a few years anyway here we are and we're going to start learning how to best do that and how to best walk through that process as of tomorrow did you say is there a fee with that i'm sorry is there a fee for that service yeah i mean yes we already paid them fdi 365 that is our lead generation. How much was that? The lead generation is 400 and, no, it's $625 a month. Um, and that is IDA funds. Obviously, that's what they want us to do with them. <laughs> so, sure. So um, that's all part of the industrial development. Trail Town Grant, we just, um, actually after I, I did this agenda, I think we found out that we got extended to December, which is a double-edged sword. Um, I'll be really glad whenever that's done, but it's a good thing we're not non-compliant, so the extension is good and the fact that we're not non-compliant with the state, but it's bad because the longer that we have to hold on to that grant, the more we're holding up the uh, Parks and Rec from being able to use that grant. They can't apply for it or get that grant until those access ramps are constructed and done and we can close that grant out. Unfortunately, we can't control the river level and it has not been at Summer Pool. It wasn't all year last year. This year, every time it's reached Summer Pool, then it rains again within a day. So here we are. I will That's update. Well weather coming. I will update that Mayor Chen stopped me today and uh, below the weir, which is a little bit lower obviously because the weir does back it up, uh, Jason was able to install the steps um, down there and they've met their portion of the match. So that part's done. So really yes. all we're waiting for is up. So that one's the Hartford uh, weir ramp and it was our in-kind or our matching labor, I guess I should say. That was part of our matching uh, funds for that grant. So we did that one, the city of Hartford installed that one themselves. The other three are uh, being installed by our contractor, which is um, Ross Construction, and they are concrete precast steps. All the steps have been delivered. We're just waiting for the river. Level. How long did they extend the grant for? How long? Till December. It? Yeah, not long. No. But, but it's already been extended twice, so like okay. surely we can get it done before December. I think they were right. intending to install them then the monsoon hit, right? Like Yeah. Yeah. So. Was yeah. the extension based on COVID? Out of curiosity. No, the extension was because of the, the river. river level. Yeah, because of it's just like you're flooding all last year. This it's year cool. we Yeah. This year yeah. we haven't we haven't had uh, long enough where the river's been low so that they can do the cutting and installing. So. so that's where we are with that, unfortunately. But I promise you, I will be the happiest person on the planet whenever that grant is closed. Um, we are going to have to go into closed session in a little bit to talk about a proprietary um, proposal. So, uh, excuse me. 
and under old business yet, in the minutes before we had discussed setting up committees for committee for new members and a bylaw committee. Were those committees set up? No. You might want to do the bylaw one. Yeah, we need to get a chest and see what kind of time we're in on that problem. Uh, it's going to take some time to tear them up on the island. I was going to say I could probably help that along a little bit. Uh, see, we've got a lot of time. Well, I don't have a lot of times. Somebody that's retired, Mike. existing bylaws and we're talking about amendments and everything exactly you know what's the role of the board versus the executive director because when I read the bylaws I think it gets a little muddy a little maybe so, so what is the board's role as, as a member of the OCDA board what, what is the actual duty here the board should set the bylaws and the executive director should carry them out fair enough which, which is, a, is a good cursory but I'm saying like is it the role of the board to advise and the executive director mm -hmm. to, oh, to so just well. carry to do it all so this is strictly an advisory capacity that, is that what I'm getting? What okay. It, the board is basically just an advisory committee. Yes. Okay. The advisory committee, then, when set into motion, should be carried out by the executive director. But the executive director is somewhat autonomous in a way that they can, so long as they're caring for the ideas of the of the organization. The advisory of your board, to me, is to set the strategic vision of your board, of your organization. The executive director should then have input into what strategic plan should be, help provide guidance and with the board, because the way we're set up, we're set up to represent different entities, and we should be able to bring our strategic vision for economic development from those entities, set a strategic plan, and then the board needs to advise a monitor that will follow our strategic plan. Okay. And then... But we're not, like, micromanaging her day-to-day. Please tell me. falls within the strategic vision or falls within the bylaws. And that seems a heavy undertaking for a volunteer board. Well, I don't know a board that's different. And I'm going to say another thing that, like, and I'm just speaking out, I'm speaking the boards I'm sitting on and our hospital board, our governing board, is it is their job to advise. And intervene if there is operational issues that cannot be resolved. It's also the board's mm -hmm. job to fill the vacancies of the board. Executive uh, director mm -hmm. should not be involved in yeah, the Yeah, I'll get you. Okay. You don't the want original to board work. had a, all this, but I'll get you some of this. I had a copy, but I think it was out of order because it was kind of hard to. visitor comments well wait you got your committees <coughs> bylaws committee is Tara Kenny Seth Cece and Justin 
It's all right. Your new member is Scott. <laughs> Bylaws is Tara, Kenny, Seth, CC, and Justin. So under new members, like like CC. how you're going to advertise, <laughs> like for the well, that's what we we do it on Facebook. I mean, that's just, and we've got a, we've got the application on our website. That's what he's asked me to do so far. So that's what we put on and send them to you guys. Yeah, here The new members, right now, you got Scott. Wilkes. But I mean, I can advertise on however you want. What's uh, that just fall under? Like it needs to be defined. Like how it's fine with me. You only have Scott on that. Oh, yeah. And the new members committee. What is the new members committee doing? I thought you guys decided. Board it really not needs to be, it needs to be board vacancies. <coughs> board vacancies. It's a nominating committee is the actual word. You should have a nominating committee that any application should go before a nominating committee. Oh. And then the board, like, and I'm going to say a board, like, and I keep referencing well, how can I eat hospitals? Because we've had a government board that has operated beautifully for years. We are, as administration, we're not involved at all in our board appointees. It's our board's job to find yeah. the vacancies. Because that way you keep an autonomous, or you keep a, a board that has, does not have bias or prejudice. I don't know if that's in the bylaws, but that should be something that the bylaw committee, in my opinion, works on is in the bylaws it should have the new member process. I like that. Yeah, so that needs to be spelled out in the bylaws before we try to make a new member committee. Let's just address the bylaws and, yeah. Yeah, there's very, in, in, procedurally it's not very good. <laughs> That's the first, I mean, we've got, work, yeah, we've got some work to do on the bylaws yeah. before we need to do a lot okay. of other things because there's just a lot of things that are not clear. Yeah, I learned something in May, but it tells the process for the uh, entities, which our board is made up of mostly entities. We've actually got that on a spreadsheet, Kenny, if you want me to send those to you guys, it's corrected. Yeah, I'm a paper and pencil, and I've got it wrong, uh, so. Especially the people who are not familiar with. But uh, the second sheet has got the entity members, eight of them, <coughs> which are supposed to be selected by the entities themselves. So the uh, all ones we have to worry about are the non entity and perhaps some at large if we want. Is there a difference in non-entity and at large, or they one and the same? They're one and the same. Non-entity? Yeah. Yeah. Aren't they one and the same? No, non-entity is like small business, large industry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see. Well, there's not a specific organization. Yeah. 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 Which is important. So that makes it yeah. 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 worse. Yeah. 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 Uh, so like Laura, yes, that makes sense. It's not a problem. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right. Uh, visitor comments? Anything? Board comment? Uh, while we're on this, let's simply go ahead and straighten out Bob's position. Is Mark gone for sure? Mark Knight? So, I don't know if y'all got the email I sent out, but uh, Mark Knight is no longer employed with Purdue Farms, period. So, I have no idea who the DO is going to be, and I mean, that's just the way it is. They they walk him out Monday morning at 5 o'clock that evening. He had a U-Haul full at his house, and he was gone. So, uh, at this point, uh, you know, he's out. He, I mean, it's, it's over. Uh, you now, whether, you know, you put somebody else in his position from Purdue, that's up to the board, but, you know, he was a, in my, I thought he was a, and I'm pretty sure he was a, at large, but uh, anyway, uh, he's gone. I don't know why we took put Bob into that position. Bob I mean, was already Bob in that was position. Bob was in the If you guys look at the minutes I sent you, I sent everybody y'all's minutes from 2017. Bob was in the large industry position. Mark Knight came back and we all created a, a position for him, which made him at the at-large. There was three sets of minutes that I sent you in the email. So Bob is filling the large industry position currently. The way I remember it is that they didn't have anybody doing it, so I was asked mm -hmm. to be that. And my comment was, do I really need to be large because we were quite small? If you look at this, I just handed out May the 28th. <clears throat> it told where everybody was. There wasn't one person that said, no, Mark's not. He's been carried on my record since 2017, but it don't make a bit of difference. Yeah. No, it doesn't to me Except either. Except for do we need to fill the position? That's just the way I understood it, and well, I know that at yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah, that that's where the difference does come in. Do you feel that you can represent large industry? Do you feel confident that your industry represents large industry for Ohio County, or would you rather be at large? And if not, then we have to go back and resend one of our motions. And it doesn't matter to me. I can do whatever you guys ask What's me to do. How many employees do you have? That's a great, that's a great way to quantify it. We're in the, in the low 20s right now. We've grown, we've doubled over doubled. It's always closer to small to dumb. Manufacturing 20 employees. Or, yeah, plus. But you want to continue along with the board. Absolutely. Well, yeah, if it be at large if or large okay business. If everybody's okay with that, that's fine. Um, Normally we look at 100 and under small business owners. Everybody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. Right. What, uh, Neither or not, you're still here. Yeah. I'm here to do my best. So. I, I just don't believe that we necessarily have to do that. Purdue. 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 Purdue is not guaranteed a spot on there. You know, in just but a large, 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 large industry, you know, to, to, to say it has to be the next deal or Purdue is it's just not beneficial to you. No, to I think that, like, if you look at what your top five employers are there, you've got the school system that's represented, you've got health care that's represented, you have um, Docell, or we're talking to, we're talking to, he's we're actually the mayor. He's, the yes. I mean, the way that I'm reading this, and you guys can tell me what your intent was, I don't know what your intent was. You'll have to explain that. But the way that I'm looking at it, whenever you said large industry was like heavy industry, I was looking at it like that meant manufacture heavy industry, oh, and numbers. small business is more like retail. Numbers. Numbers. Number of employees. It's like, do you represent math? Yeah. Is, is it you. wise though? I mean, if we're talking about part of her job is to attract large industry and, and large you know, large-scale employers to the area, do you want somebody who's specifically from one of those businesses when we talk about incentives and everything and they would have a conflict because if they're not getting the same incentive package to... I don't know what you're saying. I mean, like, I'm saying... Of our, part of our job is to attract small businesses, too. Well, yeah. agreed, but, I mean, the so. incentive packages are clearly different. But you want... Well, like, right now, we need to know... We right. need someone on the board who can represent that 200 job, 300 job. 
business too. Well, aren't you a 200 or 300 job business? I represent the healthcare. You got young as well. You might, yeah, you might want to yeah, seriously yeah. consider WGT. industry. Industry. Industry versus small business. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I do. I think there's some very specific different needs. Yeah. One's very retail, one's very manufacturing, obviously. Different processes, you different types of employees. That was my point. Which is like in a restaurant. Still be a small. Yeah. Than I think it does. If we're going to say industry, we wouldn't have to say large industry. That would be a change in the bylaw. Then you wouldn't have to decide between saying, a small business and a large. I was just thinking. It feels a little six of one, half a dozen of another. Bob's going to stay either way. Is he mm -hmm. going to be at large? Well, I think that it does matter. Is the matter. point going to be that it open up another board slot? No, that's why I think it does matter. Help me understand. I'm going to leave that to the staff. Well, there was already 11, and then with the five at large, it's 16. The bylaws say we're going to have 15. We can, yeah, we can so, add them. Well, we're not adding them. No, I'm just saying if we fill all of the 11 at the top and keep five at the at large, it's too many. But right now, large? we don't have anyone from the Industrial Foundation, and I thought we said last time. Not that it's dissolved, but they're not meeting. They're not being active at the moment. Is that correct? The Industrial right. Foundation yeah, is not meeting. Yeah. So if we didn't fill the Industrial Foundation role at this time, we would still stay in the boundaries of the 15. With with just him and not another one, or add another one in place of more We'll have to fill our industry. <coughs> Who owns that large? This will take care large? of itself pretty soon. As at large, uh, or like I'm at large. Scott. Kenny. Your small business. We did Terry tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ag, we just did tonight with Miss Anderson. Oh, the chamber we did with David. Large is the question mark. Finance, we just did with Mr. Miller. Hospital, we got CC and the fiscal court sounds small. So, really, if Bob is in the large slot, then at this point, you're done. You don't, you don't have any vacancies until you two go off December 31st. In our bylaws, within our bylaws. And then we have 15. Because that's what we said. Yeah. Remember when we all this, we talked. But no matter what our bylaws said, that's what we were going to go by. But so if you're saying, go ahead, I'm sorry. If that's what it's going to say, then if you want to do another one, we need to change the bylaws. That's right. If you're saying Bob can't go in large industry, then we're going to have to have at least 16 members instead of 15. Okay. But when Kenny goes off, you're at large. We could fill that with a large industry or large business. True. Or if you want to do it that way, yeah. that works. And then you don't have to change your bylaws. Such small things. That would be it. Like, so we we got got so then you would move all into an hour. Yeah. Uh, we already came up with the numbers. Well, yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. this yeah. situation. Well, you get, I like the mask. You get to stay until the Because I'm just smiling. We don't get to go either way. Okay, so I'm going to he stays like he is till you go off. Like is till <clears throat> what is he? Large industry. Large industry. Hey, that's what. That's what that's was in your minutes. minutes it. <laughs> yeah, and so I think like as we are, I think what we're trying to do as a board is come back to being completely we fall. Yeah. If the 2017 minutes say that he's large industry, I would suggest that he remain large industry, and then come January, say that. come January, I think we, then you can determine if he needs to stay in that role. And I don't know if I'm going to use the right words here. We never, from that, and I don't, I didn't bring my email to look at it. Whatever that original motion for Mark Knight, we never. I don't know what the word is. We rescinded it or we never changed that we had not appointed him as large industry. That was a board oversight in my opinion. And then we came back and we nominated Bob. And I think I nominated him as large industry because at the meeting we thought Mark was, and, and Kenny correct me if I'm wrong, we thought Mark wasn't interested. Then Mark said, oh, I just went to the wrong meeting mm -hmm. and we brought him on. And so I think we have two motions saying in your second set of minutes that I sent you guys you all discussed that Mark did not accept the position and therefore you were feeling that large industry position. 
session with Bob. That was the discussion. I sent it to all Monday of you. Monday didn't accept it. He missed the April meeting because he thought I know, but I'm saying that this is what was in, I wasn't here. This was what was in your minute. So if we, as a board, I can step all, out if you guys would like to discuss this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I just showed up to eat some time in one day. One day. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> y'all <laughs> cool. Chinese food. <laughs> That's a bottle of food. I just said there's some fruit Chinese food. Here I am. I'm going to make a motion. Okay. I move that Bob stays on at large. In in December, when there's a vacancy at the at large, that position be changed to large industry or large whatever. It's large business. And then large business is filled. Okay, so you're making a motion that he stays on in large industry until December whenever there's an at-large position that comes open and he moves into that and we fill the large industry. I think that's a beautiful compromise. Okay. Motion made by Jody. Anybody understand it? Seconded by Cece. Any discussion? Anyone? All large all industry side. just as, oh, I'm sorry. Discussion large industry does not mean Purdue. It, it, it's already made. Not that we don't want someone from Purdue. Industry, 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 indust